hit that subscribe button and the bell icon beside it to check out our latest videos before anyone else. Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Greedy Tech and this is the unboxing of the Realme 2 Pro. So guys, this is the retail unit. I've ordered it on the first sale and delivery date was supposed to be on October 24th, but thankfully I've received it earlier. Now this would be the unboxing of a retail unit of Realme 2 Pro and I'll be sharing you my initial impressions as I really didn't see this phone in person. Now I'm really excited because this phone really offers a lot of things that no other phone in this price segment and not even any other phone under 20,000 rupees offers. Like a dewdrop design Snapdragon 660 processor with good cameras. So I am definitely really excited about this phone and I have huge expectations with this phone and it's probably the Redmi Note 5 killer and Mi A2 killer obviously. I just hope it doesn't disappoint me in any area. Now with all that said, let's just get on with the unboxing. Now let's have a quick physical overview of the box. At the bottom it says Realme and at the top it says 2 Pro. By the way, the entire box packaging is pretty similar to the current generation of Realme phones. That's the Realme 2, Realme 2 Pro and the Realme C1. They have the same accent colors at the bottom with Realme and the phone's name at the top. So that's pretty much the same. Now on the sides, once again, we have the phone's name that's Realme 2 Pro. On the back, we have just the IMEA numbers, Made in India logo or sticker, whatever you want to call it. Over here, we have the color information, that's Blue Ocean. Now at the bottom over here, we have shipping related information and manufacturing details. So without any further ado, let's get on with the unboxing. Now this phone is sold exclusively on Flipkart in three variants. Base variant starts at 14,000 rupees for 4 gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of storage. Next variant is priced at 16,000 rupees for 6 gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of storage. By the way, these two variants with 64 GB of RAM come with EMMC 5.1. Now the third variant is priced at 18,000 rupees for 8 gigabytes of RAM and 128 GB of storage. Now this particular variant comes with UFS 2.1 storage, which is faster than the other variants. So for more price, you're not just getting more RAM and storage, you're actually getting faster memory and faster storage as well. This phone will be available in three colors, Blue Ocean, Black Sea and Ice Lake. And I have the Blue Ocean with us right now with 4 GB of RAM and 64 GB of storage. Personally, I think this combination should be sufficient for most people because you also have a dedicated SD card slot and 4GB of RAM should be sufficient for good memory management. So guys, at the top we have a small cardboard box which probably has SIM card ejector, documentation and a soft silicon pouch. So this is a soft silicon pouch, we'll come back to it in a minute. These are the documentation which we never read. Next we have the phone itself, let me just put that aside for now. Next we have the 10 watts power adapter which is surprisingly made in India and it still has OPPO branding on the back. Finally it has a micro USB charging cable, there's no type C and personally I'm not really against it either. So these are all the contents inside the box, there are no free earphones just like the previous Realme phones. So let me just put everything aside and come back to the phone. So this phone is wrapped in a plastic wrapping, let me just remove that. Over here we have some warning information and a quick preview of how the SIM card tray looks like with a dedicated SD card slot. Now this is the phone. We have another sticker with IMEA numbers. Please remove that. Don't keep it there. It just looks ugly. So guys, this is how the phone looks on the back and this is how the phone looks on the front. So this phone looks pretty similar to Oppo F9 Pro except for the design pattern on the back whether it's thickness or the camera placement, fingerprint placement or even the camera module on the front with the speaker grill over here. Everything looks pretty similar to Oppo F9 Pro which is priced at 24,000 rupees. So guys, now let's have a quick physical overview and then check out the specs. On the back, this one has a 2.5D curved fiberglass with some super reflective material underneath it so it's creating some amazing looking reflections. Well, I still prefer Realme 1 or Realme 2's design but even this pattern is pretty good. And I think I personally like this ocean blue color over the rest of the colors. So if you want my suggestion, just go with this color. Now the central frame is supposed to be made of plastic, but I really can't say if it is made of plastic or not, but it does come with a pretty shiny blue paint job. Now coming to the buttons, they are not sufficiently elevated. They are kind of flat. They have a nice clicky feel to it, but I wish they were slightly more elevated. Now with the case on, these buttons might feel better. I'll get back to it in a minute. Now coming to the rest of the aspects, on the back, it is a dual camera setup with a 16 megapixel primary camera with f1.7 aperture with Sony IMX398 sensor, followed by a 2 megapixel secondary camera for depth sensing with f2.4 aperture 
used exclusively to take portrait shots. That's followed by a single LED flash, fingerprint scanner and Realme branding at the bottom. Now this camera module has a slight little bump to it, but even when you're using this phone on a flat surface without a case, the phone is not wobbling, so that's kinda okay. By the way, the rear camera used on this phone is a 2-year-old sensor used on OnePlus 5 and 5T. So the rear camera performance on this phone should be pretty impressive. Now coming to the front, it has a pretty massive 6.3-inch IPS display with Full HD Plus resolution in the new 19.5 is to 9 aspect ratio with 408 ppi with the new dew drop design which gives it a 90.8% screen to body ratio. It even has a 2.5D curved Corning Gorilla Glass 3 for protection. So in terms of build and display, it is really top notch. Now inside this small little notch, it has a 16 megapixel front facing camera with f2.0 aperture along with a proximity sensor. Above the camera, it has the earpiece grill, just like the Oppo F9 Pro. Now below the display, it's completely plain. By the way, it also comes with a free tempered glass pre-applied, which is something I really appreciate from brands like Oppo, Vivo and Realme. I wish everyone else could do that as well. Now coming to the sides, on the right side, it has a power button and on the left side, it has a volume buttons, along with a SIM card tray that can house two nano SIM slots, along with a dedicated SD card slot. Now this phone obviously does support dual SIM, along with dual 4G and dual Vo LTE. So you can use two geosims on this phone and two sims in 4G network at the same time. Now going on next, at the top it has a secondary microphone for noise cancellation and at the bottom it has a 3.5mm audio jack followed by the primary microphone, micro USB charging port and the mono speaker on the left side. Now coming to the rest of the specifications, this phone sports a Snapdragon 660 processor with a Reno 512 GPU. The variant I have comes with 4GB of RAM and 64GB of storage. It will be running ColorOS 5.2 based on Android 8.1 Oreo and it has a decently large 3500mAh battery. There's no fast charging and it comes with a regular 10W power adapter, so it should take around 1.5 to 2 hours to charge the phone completely. Now this is the free case that we get inside the box, so let me just put it on and see how it looks like and what kind of protection it offers. Are the rear cameras secured or are the displays secured or not? Okay, it's on. So you get this flap at the bottom just like other Realme cases to protect your charging port from water gas. It does offer some kind of water protection. Now it has a raised layer for both the rear camera and the front display so you can comfortably put your phone directly on a flat surface on its face or on its back and it should protect the display and the camera module without any issues. But like I always say, if you really want some drop protection, better invest in a good case. Now let me just remove this case and turn on the phone and see what we get right out of the box. Now this is the first boot, so let me just configure everything pretty quickly and come back to you once the phone is configured. Now I'm going to set up the fingerprint scanner and face and lock. Now there was haptic feedback while I was using the fingerprint scanner, especially while registering it, but the vibration motor or the haptic feedback doesn't look all that impressive. Now it's time to register my face. And it's done. So guys, this is how the phone looks once you turn on the phone and set it up. I've just installed one application that's CPU-Z and these are the bloatware that comes pre-installed like Facebook, Amazon, UC browser, it even has Opera browser at the bottom and on the left side we have the smart assistant which shows you some widgets with information like frequently used applications, weather information and so on. So here we go, this is the smart assistant and you can disable it from settings if you don't like it. And this is your default launcher, there is no amp draw just like always and all the apps are thrown to the home screen. It has very little bloatware but even that can be uninstalled by doing this. Now if there is any application that you don't use on this phone, it's better to uninstall it as soon as possible. Now with that said, let me just clear all the apps running in the background and then see the amount of free space that we get right out of the box. By the way, I've just installed this one application and it shouldn't matter a lot. Now for some reason in this application it is showing the processor as Snapdragon 636 but this phone actually has a 660 processor. Now out of that 4GB of RAM you get about 1900MB of free RAM right out of the box and out of that 64GB of storage you get about 46.66GB of free space for user apps and user data. Now that's definitely more than sufficient for your games and regular applications and if you have any other media you can always transfer it to your SD card. Now this is the interface for the rear facing camera, the same one we have seen on the Oppo F7 Pro, F9 Pro, Oppo F7 and F9 Pro. Now these are all the modes, you have the portrait mode over here. And on this phone you also get different lighting effects, just like on F9 Pro, you have natural lighting, film lighting, monotone light, 
rim light and finally bicolor light. Now it also has stickers. It has auto HDR and you also get the option to resize the pictures. You can go with the standard frame, square or even full screen. Just go with the standard and if you really want a full screen image, just crop it. Now you also get this button over here. This is just a digital zoom, but it's quite convenient. You can also do the pinch to zoom gesture. It also works. Now this is the interface for the video recording and we can record video at a maximum of 4K resolution. So that's pretty great. And this one is supposed to offer electronic image stabilization. So what do you think about it looking at this footage? Do let me know by commenting below. Now this is the interface for the front facing camera. It even has auto HDR and to take portrait selfies, you need to enable this particular toggle. Next, it even has stickers where you can add all these funny things to your face and just spice up your selfie game. Next, it even has panorama to take wider selfies. On Samsung, it's called wider selfie, but on this phone, it's just called panorama. And on the website, we have time lapse and video recording. Now that's the camera interface. Now these are some sample pictures taken using the front and rear cameras. Now let's test the speaker loudness. So guys, that's the audio experience from the speaker. I won't say it's the loudest one in the price segment, but it is sufficiently loud for media consumption, ringtones and alarms. Now even the display's picture quality is pretty good and that's something I really like. Now on YouTube application, you can do the pin gesture to go full screen and unlike most phones, you can actually use the entire screen. So even this notch area has been covered and because of this very small notch, you actually get a much more immersive experience and it definitely looks better than your regular notches like this one. Now on this phone and the Oppo F9 Pro, we have a new feature called sidebar. You can swipe over here to bring it up. Now this is in quick actions and these are in quick applications. You can record the screen, take a screenshot, block heads up notification and open messenger in a floating window to message while watching video or doing any other stuff like playing games. So as of now, this is one of the most unique features on this phone. Now I've already configured the fingerprint scanner. So let's test that out. So here's the fingerprint scanner. And the fingerprint scanner is pretty impressive. It is super fast, probably as fast as Poco F1, Oppo F7 and other flagships. This is definitely one of the best fingerprint scanners in the price segment. So fingerprint scanner works without any issues. Now let's test face unlock. By the way, this is what the front facing camera is looking at. This camera is being in the middle. Now before I test face unlock, we need to make few changes. Now these are the settings related to face unlock and by default, you have to swipe up the lock screen to unlock the phone. If you want your phone to directly unlock, select this option. So this is how it looks like. It will directly unlock without showing you the lock screen. Now, if you don't want your phone to unlock, if your eyes are closed, enable this particular toggle. Now let's test face unlock. By the way, these are valid conditions. So it is pretty fast, insanely fast, whatever you want to call it. It is as good as OnePlus 6. 
and other phones like Vivo V11 Pro, Oppo F7 and Oppo F9 Pro and obviously as fast as Poco F1. So here's the lock screen and it's unlock. Now I'll close my eyes and see if it'll unlock. So it's not working. Now I'll put on my glasses and see if it'll unlock instantly or not. So with my glasses on, face unlock is slightly slower but still way faster than other phones in the same price segment. Now let's test it in low lighting conditions. Now I'll just turn off all the lights in the room. So guys, I've turned off all the lights in the room. So it's pitch black and it still works. It's pretty awesome. And as far as I know, there's no infrared sensor on this phone. And even in complete darkness, it's working. It's pretty fast and usable. So that's just awesome. Now these are the Anti2 and Geekbench scores. So guys, now coming to my initial impressions, the entire design and build of the phone is pretty good. Fingerprint scanner is very easily accessible and it has a very shallow depth so it is much more easily traceable even without the case. The super shiny back is really beautiful but as you can see because of the glass bill, it is attracting a lot of smudges. Something like an anti-fingerprint coating would have been really appreciated. Now on the front, as I said, it comes with a tempered glass pre-applied and that is something I really love about this phone. And this free case that we get inside the box is a really nice addition. Now in terms of build, I just wish these buttons were slightly more elevated. Now coming to the display, it looks amazing, especially for the price. This is the cheapest phone in the India market to come with a photo drop design or dew drop, whatever you want to call it, with a maximum screen to body ratio. So guys, for a base price of 14,000 rupees, this is the best phone out there. So if you're looking for a phone at 15,000 rupees with an awesome display, bigger battery, best in class performance, I'll definitely suggest you this phone. So guys, what do you think about this phone? Do let me know by commenting below this video and if you want me to make any specific video, tweet out to us with the hashtag AskGreedyTech on Twitter and I'll try to make it as soon as possible. I'm Nikhil from GreedyTech signing off. Have a nice day.